What's up? Uh, okay, we're gonna vlog, and today I am taking you to see Bell and Sebastian. I love Bell and Sebastian, and I look forward to the rare opportunities that I have to see Bell and Sebastian. Um, today, the last the last week has been an absolute nightmare. And under normal circumstances, I would have just skipped this as badly as, I, as I'd like to see them. But, um, I got to I have to be out of my apartment for a few hours. There's something going on downstairs. And they asked, you know, if they could make a lot of noise. I said, of course, you know, they asked me a long time ago. And the whole neighborhood, as I'm leaving the house, I'm realizing these events were just passing so many people. I don't know if you can see out the window the line of people there. Uh, there's events everywhere, so I have no clue how I'm getting a parking spot when I come home. And the other thing is that in L.A., to go to certain places, now we're going to the Greek. The Greek is on a mountain uh, with two or three lanes of traffic for... Um, few thousand people so you got to leave early either we'll probably get stuck in five minutes of traffic if we leave early enough if you try to do the thing you would do anywhere else where you know the band it's six o'clock now the band goes on at nine we know that uh, normally it wouldn't leave till 8 20 right here you got to leave at six and the whole logic is, what you do is, you bring food to wherever you're going and you picnic, which is why all these venues have picnic spots. So you leave early, there's very little traffic, you have a picnic, you have your dinner, you see the show, you turn around, you bolt out of there, that's how you account for the, the gap in time. But uh, because of the last week being such a disaster, I was completely ill-prepared for picnicking. So the first stop we're gonna make is at Jersey Mike's. I ordered a sandwich. It's not my first choice, but it was just the thing that made sense at this moment today. Uh, the parking lot at Jersey Mike's is um, a different kind of hell that you may get to experience in a minute. So we'll go see Bell and Sebastian and try to forget about this whole last week. And that's what we're doing. I'll check in with you at Jersey Mike's. Okay, so this is the Jersey Mike's parking lot. Pray for us. That, that's a spot. You can't see it, it's off screen. It looks impossible to get, but it's there. Let's see how we do. Look out, you guys. Okay, we lucked out. Okay, we got the Jersey Mike's. Only in LA does Jersey Mike's offer movie set catering. All right. I was about to go, but then I remember there's a Starbucks right there, and I got a Starbucks gift card from Procter & Gamble the other day. So let's go get an iced tea to take with us. Okay, you guys, we got the iced tea. Let's go. So let me show you, it's 6.30 now. As you can see, there's not a single car in front of me at the moment, which is amazing. So if you've ever been to the Greek before, or you've ever watched videos of what it's like to come here, 
usually you'll see that this is a parking lot uh, and you can't move. A lot of these people are biking in the street where they shouldn't be because this is also the entrance to Griffith Park and you've got a lot of just, you know, clueless tourists, stuff like that. But we're making great time. It's 6.30 now. Uh, the opener goes on in about a half hour. We got our sandwich, we got our iced tea. It's gonna be great. How's it going? So what you do is you park over there so that you can pull right out after the show. And then you take this little side door here. And I have never waited in line for more than two minutes ever at this door. This is probably the worst box office in LA. Uh, I think I've walked up to that window three times in my life. Very typically, there was a line there, but there was no line here. This is a, uh, a faux VIP area. And this is just an overpriced bar. 
they used to do like, a, I wouldn't even call it buffet, but like hors d'oeuvres up there, but I think they stopped doing that after the pandemic. Doesn't even look like it's being used for VIP anymore. These terrace seats are really awful. I only sat in them once for uh, Neil Diamond a long time ago. Come here, I'll show you the layout of the venue. So the last three rows up there are benches that they, I mean, they give away, it's rare that you'll ever pay more than $20 to walk into this theater. Last three rows are bleacher benches. That's C that they give away. Here's B, there's A, there's the pit. Kind of a shitty view of the pit, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But here's what I'd like to show you. So those terrace seats were add-on to boost capacity. I don't know what year they put them in. Um, definitely before I moved here. And the thing with this pit is, it's really tight. Like, I don't know how well you can see the dimension of the stage, but those seats are really, really tightly packed in there. So those pit seats will go for absurd amounts of money because of the real estate, but they're really shitty to sit in. Now here they have these sort of knockoff Hollywood Bowl boxes that would have been handicap seats once upon a time. Um, and those are okay, but they're not worth the money that they charge for them because they are theoretically that far away from the stage. Um, so, really your best bet is the back of B. which is relatively cheap. I mean, that seat right there in the front row, your knees are against the stage, which isn't the right height. You'd probably pay anywhere from $150 to $450 for that seat, depending on the show. Um, these A's are okay, but you're mostly gonna get wedged on the sides, and the sides are a harsh turn on the sides. I learned a long time ago that nothing in that whole section is remotely worth the price. Even, honestly, even if it's 10 bucks, it's not worth the price. It's just a shitty layout. Which brings us to the back of B. So even if you're in a corner right here, you can see it's a much better situation than being in the front row. The theater has a loose Greek theme, but it's fairly nondescript. It's basically just a, uh, a box. The height isn't appropriate for the depth of the stage. And so this last row of B is actually the only vantage point that's appropriate for the venue. I really do like that old um, lighting booth though. And you can see how scattered C is Absolutely terrible and fairly overpriced for a venue like this. The merch booth is as far away from the entrance as possible, although I suppose most people walking up the hill and parking in general are probably coming in this door. Yeah, look at that line. 
that line goes all the way down the hill. I don't know if you can see it. Let me try to show you. Look at that stupid line. And that's where we came in, just up the hill right there. It's kind of strange that Mercedes sponsors a Bell and Sebastian show, but here we are. They used to have a booth over there with uh, cookies and coffee and tea, which is always the most important booth when you have an outdoor venue in the summer. But as usual, I'm in the minority with that belief. <laughs> if you want to upgrade your seats, you can go on any ticket reseller right now and get a better seat for $10. Why are they so Greek theater venue merch here at the pretzel and popcorn stand? I do not know. In previous years before the pandemic, they had a lot more um, advertising partners. Fandango used to have an uh, Airstream right there where they did prizes. And so this is a makeshift picnic area. This is all, these tables are new. They used to have much shittier tables and much better food, ironically. Here's the abbreviated merch booth. which I don't even remember being here last year. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that was there last year. I think that's new. Sebastian set up and you see that lighting rig hangs over the screen and we're in the back of B still it's obstructed now you'll have the video assist <coughs> but that won't show the backdrop per se it'll be a video assist so with the curve there the incline we're up and see that electric would drop to like there, effectively cutting off half the stage. And that's one of the main problems with the venue. You've got to roll with it, you've got to roll with the punches, you've got to take what happens, you've got to 
lot of people, you know, quit their job and thought, what the fuck was I doing that job for? Any, anybody quit their job during lockdown that were in back? A few. But, but luckily, because this is Hollywood and everything, a, a few of you stayed in your job and made loads and loads of TV programs.
So, in real time, we cut out of the venue. I've never timed it before, but because I was filming it, I could see the time code. We got out of the venue. I'm actually across from the House of Pies. Two minutes and 56 seconds. I never thought it was that fast. That's pretty funny. Um, that was amazing. So happy I went. Really needed that. I was bummed that they waited to the last song for Boy With The Arms Strap because that's when you have to run for it. Otherwise, you'll sit on that, <coughs> on that hill for an hour getting out of there. You gotta run out during the last song. And you gotta have that good parking spot to really be able to bolt. Because otherwise, I think the first two lots are stacked. But, anyway, so that was the show. That was great. Thanks for coming along with me. Um, hope you had fun too, watching. And um, I'll try to keep vlogging this summer, okay? I'll see you next time. Bye.